today we're gonna talk about haters gonna hate. Cheng cheng cheng. So much to say about this. Man. So much to say. That's why today cannot have guests. If not too much to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no time, no time. Then we need three hours. Uh, I think both Sheila and I, having been in this industry for a pretty long time, uh, definitely passed the 10 year mark for both of us. Mm. Have had our fair share of haters. Mm. On social media, yeah. alone. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You can go first. So I think my first one was when I um, said the effort on TV. Oh. Right? I think that was my first one. But the funny thing is, it wasn't about saying that, it was about Suddenly, the hating was about everything else. Mm. Like your face, oh my gosh, so ugly. Mm. And then, oh my gosh, so stiff. What a terrible host. To be fair, I was very young at that time. Young in, both in age and in terms of experience. Mm. And it only gets better with age, honestly, right? Um, like your own uh, skills and all that gets better with age. But it was quite tiala, like honestly, at that point, I was like, wow. Right? And then I guess that was my first. And because you were so young, it was very hard to deal with all these comments hard. from people who don't matter also yeah. because everything matters to you then I mean it's so many years but if I really have to recall it I think I put it out my head it was You really didn't Jade I didn't? You had, you had, we recently talked about this and you were saying like this is the first time that you have said it on screen because it was so uncomfortable yeah. for you for so many years you were so affected by it I think only recently I've started talking about it Yeah. yeah. So it, it took me like more than 10 years to talk about it because to be honest, still don't know if I said it or not, don't know, but I accept that okay, it was me. And it was so uncomfortable because I felt like uh, like I really had failed. Lor. You know, because as a presenter to say something like that, even though your mic was supposedly switched off, you kind of failed because you should be entirely sure that you're not going to be hurt to say it, number one. Right, number two, I guess I was very affected by like people saying that I was very stiff or whatever. Even though, you know, you tell yourself, yeah, I was very young then, blah, blah, blah. It affected and it affected me. Um, it affected my family, and yes, I was very traumatized. Honestly, my mom was really upset, mm. right? And I think that's because she's she's a person who never liked the whole being in the limelight thing. Although she's always supported me, and I never pre prior to that, I've always had only positive, if not neutral, press. Mm. So this was my first like really bad press. Like not only saying that on TV, but also. Um, She's such a bad host, why is her face like that? She's not very pretty. You know, there were all these yeah. random negative yeah. stuff that trolls just write. That conveniently, like people conveniently just kind of slip yeah, it in. Yeah, and I think that was hard and it was hard for her, you know, and I still had to go back to work because the show had to go on, right? Yeah. So that was that was actually a really, really How old were you it. then? I was 24, I think. 24? How 24? has that affected your career as well as your... Well, I was in cold growth. storage, man, that year. Really? Uh? Yeah, I would drop from... Especially, I was host, I was slated to host a lot of government oh, events right, right, right. and jobs and then they would have nothing to do with me. So that didn't help the cold storage. Mm. And then, um, mostly that, like, I think in terms of work, it was that. But it really but affected me. But that's a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot. It was a lot. And that's when like I was only two years into this job. So it's a lot. And at that point, I was like, up, up, up. I was getting like magazine covers and all the way up. And then suddenly, it's like... Mm. Right, so that affected, but I think more than just the career, because you do, it is possible to bounce back from that, and I think I have, but it, it was the the mental side of it, la. And, and like I said, a lot of it to do with the family and that sort of anxiety, mm. you know, mental anxiety. The latest one actually I find quite funny. Um, when I made some, uh, I think I, I put out a story or a post on. Parking. Oh my god, this one. Yeah, so basically, I know like Jack, where's our producer Jack? We've, we still argue about this, we're still arguing about this as of yesterday, right? But I stand by what I said, which is, if you... You tell them the context first. Well, okay, the context. If Basically, I was annoyed because in private housing estates, like landed property, right? A lot of these places have no double yellow lines, no single white yeah. line, which makes it free parking. Yeah, no for, indicator, like no rule to say that you cannot park Yes, here. I mean by law, by law, by no, law. it's free for anyone yeah. who has a car to park their car, bike, whatever, right? So, what irritates me is people who stay in the neighbourhood, who put dustbins, cones, put write love notes to like people to like... To choke the seat ah. Uh, yeah, choke. The and then seat. after you park there, okay, I think what triggered me was I parked at such an estate and then someone wrote me a love note to say, please do not park here. Save it for the residents who stay here. So loving. Yeah, so loving. <laughs> so that, that honestly, to put it really um, straight, it pissed me off big time. So I, I wrote a post on it, right? And it kind of went uh, a bit bigger than I thought it would, right? And it, so it came out in a few news sites. And again, my mum was being my mum. Oh, is it? it? It actually went on... Like, yeah, like I think like some Chinese press, then really, there was yeah. like mothership. Oh, I didn't realize that it was Straits on publication. Times and like I was like, wow. Like mainstream media picked it up. Like. Yeah, basically mainstream media picked it up. But I like I was, 
honestly kind of glad because I, I've always wanted to raise awareness on this issue mm. but I didn't expect it to be so polarizing. Mm. I mean, you can ask Jack lah. So Jack still doesn't agree with me. He said, what if you stay in the... Well, let's not go into the... Because it's not this discussion about whether it's correct or not. Mm, mm. Okay, but the point is, it, it also upset my mom. She was like, girl, are you okay? I'm like, huh? I'm okay lah. I mean, it's different now. And when I was 24, 25, like unsure, all that. And yeah. That one, really, there was a mistake made. But in this case, it was like, no, I stand by what I said. Right, but there will definitely be haters lah. I think somebody said, I'm just salty because I'm poor. Because I don't stay in landed, <laughs> so I'm just poor, right? What the hell? And then someone else said, oh, she's just like, uh, um, cheapo. Like, why can't you just pay for parking? Okay like cheapo lah, I want free parking, same as y'all what? Same. Yeah, that's yeah. why No matter how rich or you still want the cheapo things what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love free parking. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I love mean, a lot of free things. <laughs> Not just parking. <laughs> So that was kind of that, but I mean, I, I feel like I dealt with it a lot better now than when I was 24, 25 because... Your mom was worried because when you were 24, you didn't take it well emotionally, right? Actually, I think I didn't take it well emotionally, but she's not in the media, mm. right? And she already doesn't like being in the limelight herself. Right. And then this, here's someone that you love, who is like getting all this negative yeah. thing. It's hard to, as a mother, I guess, to stand and watch that, you know? Mm. I can only imagine. Oh, that must have been hard. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure if one of your daughters gonna like yeah. from, yeah, and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Right. So I think that was hard for her. And then so when this one came around, she was also a bit, you know, and I had to reassure us like, Mom, I didn't say anything wrong. You know, but I think also, of course, you have some like trolls lah. Like we're talking about parking here, right? And then somebody said, uh, who is this? You look old. Yeah. Or like you look so old now. And I'm like, how is this relevant? And you know the very irritating thing, right? Is that I mean usually the mainstream media will pick it up. Yeah. For example, like Asia One or yeah, like yeah, Today yeah. or whatever, right? And then people will comment and say, Who is this again? Like why are we covering her news? It's like, come on, actually we don't want people to cover our <laughs> news also. We don't want. It's not like we ask them to cover our news. Yeah. So it's not that you know, we also don't want them to cover. So then you are giving us grief because we are being covered yeah. and we are being arrowed. Yeah. Yeah, I think like hello, show some sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> No, really, really. So it was, but I guess for me, if I'm looking at these two, I mean, quite lucky. I mean, other than these two, I've never really had like, like really negative. Mm. You know, of course, there'll be haters here and there, but mostly these two are the biggest two. And I just think of myself in my 20s and like now when I got it this time, my, my reaction was so different. Yeah. But I feel like because I've, you know, done my own work and all that, which which I want to talk to you about as well. Okay, but before we get to Sheila's story, I'd like to thank FWD for bringing us this entire series so we get to talk about all these issues that hopefully help us and you live better. FWD Singapore is a leading digital platform that helps you buy life insurance in an easier and faster way. So, Sheila, tell me, what happened with your story? Well, I must say I've been very lucky. I've been, I mean, in the industry for a long time and yeah. I only recently got my... First, first time negative press uh, and it happened last Mother's Day okay I think a lot of people would re will remember this because it really was blown out of proportion I was a bit shocked like, honestly you were shocked right? you I was shocked because me. I saw your post and then I was like whoa after that I saw the you saw my post and then you didn't think much about it I still right? like the thing okay, okay <laughs> wait tell them the story the story okay so the story is uh, I wrote a post on how I was disappointed that my husband didn't do anything for Mother's Day that year mm. and I can't really remember the context of it now but I do remember at that point of writing in the beginning I was quite uh, I was quite sad yeah. I was quite disappointed as I had worded it very uh, clearly yeah and then towards the end I, as I was writing I mean for me I'm like that like as I write I I talk and think at the same time and then when I write I write and think at the same yeah. time so towards the end I realized that actually a lot of mothers are like me you know they don't get celebrated by their spouse or their children and I feel like they should and so I wish the mothers out there who are also not being celebrated a, a happy Mother's Day yeah and so obviously so I saw that post yeah I liked it right and I, I honestly didn't think anything of it I, I was think just like, because oh. you know me and yeah. words just come out like that like yeah. I'm very straightforward and sometimes too brutally blunt trust me she really is <laughs> even to me she, she went direct right? <laughs> people think I'm direct you know and then I met Sheila I was like whoa this girl yeah, so then I just wrote it out there and, and I also honestly didn't think much about it. But people started to have very big reaction to that. And then the press picked And then the it. press picked it up and blew it completely out of proportion. It usually is like that. Like when the press pick it up and then they will sensationalize it. And, and when I say, and, and obviously because of the whole saga, I had to write another post to apologise. Yeah. And then after that, another post because it was so just so, so it really just really got so big yeah and and i said that you know 
I didn't appreciate the press for blowing it, for sensation mm. sensationalizing it. And then people were like, "What do you mean sensationalize? This was exactly what you said." So I think people don't understand the word sensationalize. Mm. Like it can be exactly the paragraph that I write. Yeah. But then if you pluck a certain line out of context, right? It just means different things. Yeah. You know, and that is what it means to sensationalize. It's not like. Yeah, I'm still disappointed that certain things weren't done, and then there was there was a lot of people who said like, you know, you are a mother, and you should just be proud being one. You shouldn't expect celebration, mm. but but that's me, that's that's what I feel like. Why why are people telling me how I shouldn't feel? Actually, the, okay, firstly on sensation lies, we're gonna pull up some of these articles, right? Because it's the way the caption was written. I can't remember it now. Yeah. Right, but well, let's just put it up, and then we can see how different it was to her original yeah. post. Yeah. Because the post was. I could feel maybe because we we're friends. I, I knew you were sad, disappointed, and you were feeling f feeling it for all the mothers who have also been in your shoes. Yes. So that's how I read it. I was I liked it because I was like, okay, that's you know I got mm. it. Right? I'm not a mother, but I, I get it. Mm. And then it like the headlines. I was like, whoa, right? But I think what really was interesting when I read some of your hate comments, right? I mean, sorry to say a lot of there them. There were like thousands. A lot of angry men because yeah. probably their wife said, hey, you see this Sheila also like that like, like so like me, you know, yeah. some person you never do anything. So I don't know men, men hated you. A lot of people were angry. Yeah. With whether it's because I was an excuse for them to vent for mothers probably, or was yeah. it because of the husband's gunna from the wife? I don't know. Whatever it is, I think I just got a lot of pent up frustration yeah. in that post and it was it became a convenient reason for them to just use it as an excuse to hate. lament and So what hate. sort of like trolley comments were you getting at that? I cannot remember already but okay. there were so many I was kind of shocked to be honest like and you know for me right actually I take it very well I really don't care like Really you don't care? I really don't care you, So you were really unaffected? Okay for me at first when I saw that I was like really quite surprised because I didn't think that the post was very whatever right and then I was just like I feel I felt like it was totally blown out of proportion. Yeah. But when I texted you, I remember you were like, uh because whatever. What people see, yeah, I was like, Yeah, he was like, yeah, thanks, babe, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> like there's there's a lot of comments that were all these haters like writing in and all that. But actually there were a lot of mothers who wrote in mm -hmm. to me in the DMs at like to who DM me and told me like, you know, they actually understand how I feel. They have not been celebrated for years. All they want is really a simple gratitude or simple celebration or thanks from their children or their spouse. Some of them even tell me like, you know, my I told my husband, let's uh, why, why aren't you celebrating Mother's Day for me? And then he said, because you're not my mother. That is something like, the, like that, lah, huh? The most do do do. <laughs> so there were a lot of mothers who were writing in and yeah. and. And that's exactly what the post was meant for. Yeah. And I was quite disappointed that the mainstream media didn't pick up on that part. Of course not. Yeah. Because it's not so it's fun it's not to so write exciting, about that, like, right? Yeah. yeah, so exactly. So then I feel like, yeah, since I am able, even if I'm just able to reach out to one person and make her feel hurt, hurt or yeah. seen, then I think that's my job done, you know? Okay. And I think as a public figure, we all try to be that. We try yeah. to try to as inspire someone or we try to make them feel seen or hurt mm. in a certain way. But then, yeah lah, you know, this thing was just completely blown out of proportion. And like I was saying, like it's actually okay for me. Like I take this very, very well because to me, people who mind won't matter. And people who don't matter, right, I will not care what they say. You're very good. Like honestly, I, I'm definitely more affected than you, which is why I reached out to you. Because mm. I think to a certain extent, I may have been a bit more affected. And like I said, so this time around with the parking thing, I wasn't affected at all. Mm. But mostly because that was really something that I said that some people just don't agree with. Uh-oh, Jack. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> we're still fighting about this off camera. Oh my god, right? but, <laughs> it's like how long ago? <laughs> but when I think about like... Um, but wait ah, uh, Chok, going back to that right, uh, even though I wasn't affected, actually there were a lot of like, um, there were a lot of damages. Collateral damage. Collateral damages, right? yes, that's the word. Which kind of affected like my husband for one, affected my brother-in-law because he's my husband's twin brother. Oh. So he, they obviously know they are related. So like, okay. hey, why your why your why your sister in law like, like shaming that. shaming oh. your brother? And then my parents in law were very affected because their they friends were writing it, to them and asking like, what's happening between us, me and my husband? Okay. So they actually think that something serious was happening. But it, I mean, honestly, but all married couples, all couples are gonna fight what? Or yeah. like, be not serious. It's just eye that eye. I am very honest about it and I yeah. always advocate putting, I, I advocate authenticity. And authenticity, authenticity is not just about good times. I feel like, even though sometimes I feel frustrated about something, it should be put out there yeah. because a lot of people also feel the same way. I think know? we honestly, number one, right? I mean, on this thing about you and your husband not 
doing well just because of one post. I yeah. think we should try to normalize the fact that to me, when I hear that a, a couple has quarreled like friends, right? Mm. To me, it's like it's normal. I yeah. mean, I quarrel my husband too. You cannot have two people being together, living together, never yeah. quarreling. Confirm or quarrel. And like you know, people like all these people, people on social media, they always say they want to see the real thing, yeah. and they feel like oh, you know, it's like social media is so fake and blah blah. But the actual fact is that some of them can't deal with the real thing. The real thing know? being this couple just had, uh, the wife was disappointed and then she yeah. just which is very Shit, real that, that a lot of mothers yeah. actually go through that too yeah. but then when it's put out there then they can't deal with it mm, mm. then then like you want me to pretend that i'm actually okay like i'm so gracious i am but sometimes i'm not and yeah. I'm, i mean even though we are public figures we are only just human you know yeah and that's why like sometimes i feel like there's this difficulty in managing social media for me it's always been a love-hate relationship really also because nowadays i think as as the whole technology advance and social media is like so wildly used I, so widely used I feel like people are so comfortable with just making snide remarks of someone else's life or offhand remarks yeah basically like like nobody asked for this remark yeah. right? but, but suddenly right for example they could have given their remark you are like the guru of everything yeah, like that right yeah 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 like and, and yeah. like something totally off topic like for example now we're talking about Mother's Day mm. Mother's all that they like make a comment about your hair it's normal yeah. one it's normal like, like totally no point, right? like that, or what? Yeah, it's yeah. like totally not like on topic. Just trying to actually, it's not even trying hit to. you where you're. It's also just it just feeling very free to just. Yeah. I mean, so there's a freedom in social media that is great because we can. And I feel voice. that it's very unfair because it just takes away all the good things that we have done, mm. and they just focus on this one bad thing and mm. like really focus on it. You know, it's like. How many Mother's Day already? Uh? Like one, one year has passed People still? And people are still talking about it And my husband has this colleague Who bumped into him in the lift that day And said like Hey remember to get your wife like a Christmas gift Or remember your, your Mother's Day is coming Remember to get your wife something It's like come on one year has passed oh, And my husband and I have really moved on From yeah. the day of the posting Which was a year ago And people are still not letting it go I think because to them it's it's just fun, you know. It's just fun to be making someone else's life like a joke or yeah. miserable. Yeah. But I, I really think that a lot more respect should be given in this social media space. I'm sure though, at that point, um, it was tough dealing with the collateral damage because mm. I also had to deal with the collateral damage. Mm. Like because it, honestly, right? This one, I know it sounds very naggy, PSA, but I feel like before we say anything unkind on social media. Sometimes I also want to like comment something that I think yeah. is that not nice but I stop myself because I tell myself this person has a you don't mother, know story, a right? also the person has a mother, a yeah. sister, a husband who loves them and might be hurt by your yeah. comment. Even if you are trying to hurt that person but you're hurting the people around them yeah. as well. Right, I mean, I, I guess I want to know how you dealt with the, since you are not as affected by the actual comments, mm. you weren't as affected um, but how you dealt with the collateral damage, how did you bounce back? I had to message my my, my family, my side of the family were totally okay Because okay. they know the way I am <laughs> yeah. And they know that I'm very resilient to yeah. this kind of things But it was actually my husband's side of the, my husband's side of the family Who was very worried mm. And I had to like assure them and comfort them And I feel like it was just really uncalled for Uncalled for as it is, it was my fault Because I shouldn't have written that post I could have, you know, worded it in a different way in retrospect But I was really I had to comfort and assure them la. Okay. And I did la. And my father-in-law, a man of very few words, he actually said like you know certain things should be kept private between couples. Okay. And I agree with him. Uh, and so I promised him and I apologized to my husband. And he is really the only person that I need to apologize That's to. True. Really, like That's no true. one else on social media, like all these people, I don't have to apologize to any mm. of them. So I did apologize to my husband and I told him that I'll always put the family first and I will always make sure that I protect the family. Mm. And I gave him my word and I know I will Stand by never, it. never do that again. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of like the mental bounce back, because mm. it's a lot, right? Like there are all these comments and then you got to deal with the, the family side. Yeah, and outside. I was in Australia having my holiday. Yeah, wow. Well, how do you deal with all that? I mean, like the, the bounce back. Okay, but, so for me, I guess being in the media for years and being the mo a top model, it has its... I have been trained like for a long time, you know, like 
with all these critical remarks, I mean, we were talking about it. Yeah. As a model, like, you are really just being criticised for every part of we your were, body. We were laughing about because we both started modelling very young, right? Yeah. Like, even if now we're taking a shoot and then usually like you're a bit relaxed, but then your hand like that, right? Yeah. I used to get so much crap for my hand. They're yeah. like, you look like a witch. <laughs> so you have to like, then you're like, oh, shake it out. Yeah, when you open your eyes, stupid, you look like a goldfish. Yeah, if yeah. your eyes has like you no energy, you, are, you look like you're dead. So it's like I've heard the worst kind of comments. And last time when I was doing uh, a lot of fashion shows, uh, we would, okay, so people don't know this, but we will go very early for rehearsals yeah. before the mall opens up. And then we'll rehearse until the mall starts to open yeah. up. And then the show producer would use a mic and shout, Sheila, same! You don't know how to walk, ha? you know, that kind of thing. And so we are very used to this kind yeah. of training in that sense, like being um, put down or shouted Sad to at say, in but public. It's true, yeah. So I mean, we always say this, that behind this whole facade of like mm. modeling and actress and blah, blah and all that, it's very unglamorous and it really is. So I have never, to me, modeling actress whatsoever, it's always just been an occupation mm. and it's not something that I label myself and I do not associate a certain kind of prestige, I do not associate a certain kind of um, behavior or treatment in that sense. So that's how I keep myself grounded. And I guess your, your resilience also built up from the sort of training, yeah. like this sort of training. Yeah. I, I, think, I think in a way that's why like, um, for example, my mum was a lot more affected than I was. Mm. Because well, she's protective of you. Correct, but also like you, I've gone through the ropes where people shout yeah. at you. And I play sports, right? Like yeah. they will blow whistle and take you. Like I literally got grab, right? Oh, grab and thrown off the court for yeah. not performing, right? So it's it is training and it's part of resilience to. to and I think up, sports la. actually, you, you will up. feel even more affected because you actually really care about the sport. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. I, that's why I remember it till now. I was fourteen and then. Called for a time out, literally came on court and my coach pulled me out and yeah. threw me off the court, right? And so it when was... you have these kind of moments, right, and versus people who don't matter and telling you yeah, telling you this kind of thing, I will not hold on to it. La. So do you have like resilience tips? I think you and I will agree on this that we have very real friends. Yeah. So our friends will always tell us the brutal, brutal truth. truth. <laughs> Sheila tell me a lot of brutal truth that I tell you first. Uh. <laughs> I also. <laughs> I, I will take it from real friends, lah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and because I, I know that they're always looking out for me. So even when this kind of situation, like for example, the Mother's Day one happened, immediately I called my best friend. I said, "Do you mm. really think that what I said was wrong?" And then she will tell me, like, you know, you perhaps could have worded it differently. Mm. And I agree. And I said, like, yeah, you're right. You know, I should. So it's not all these other thousand comments that that I should listen because they don't know me and they don't know my story but then my best friend does and I think that she's always she always will have my back and she will always um, it's not just about protecting me but she will also want me to grow in a, yeah. in a way that's best for me and she is definitely the person that I turn to and she is my reservoir she's and my reservoir, husband right? and my husband as well he will always show me that kind of like there's I mean, I'm very lucky lah, to be honest. Like, there's a lot of people who give me unwavering love and mm. unwavering support. Which, and, and now that I'm a mother, really I feel like a lot of things really don't matter leh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because you have this safety net. And most importantly, I would say going back again to when I turned 30, the, 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 therapy help, the therapist that I've seen mm. and the spiritual work and the positive psychology course as well as meditation. I think all these things has really, really helped me a lot. I think it's like strengthen you so you have this net where you feel held and yeah. safe no matter what else happens, yeah. right? I and think, and uh, also like my, I, coming from a childhood that wasn't very um, wholesome, mm. I feel like all these are very small um, damages to me. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I guess you know if you since especially since you brought up that you come from a child that wasn't as wholesome, do you consciously try to bring your or want to try to bring your kids up in a more wholesome, resilient sort of environment? Definitely. Yes. I I would want them to feel supported and loved mm. uh, from a tender age, and I want them to be able to always come home, or no matter what they do, they know that we are there to catch them when they fall. I think in previous episodes, please go watch our previous episodes, you'll find it all linked below. Uh, we did talk about, you know, financial freedom and mm. giving your kids that freedom as well. Mm. I feel like, you know, having that sort of safety net is kind of like buying them the insurance. Yes. Not, not just actually physically buying insurance, mm. but whatever you're giving them that love and support is that sort of insurance to know that no matter what happens, mommy and daddy will always be there. Yeah to support you. Similar to buying insurance, but, right? But really like net. buying insurance, right? 
actually after being a mother then I realized that buying insurance at a very very young age like like Layla or, or Skylar who's just born yeah it really is a life investment for them you buy when they're just born yeah wow because the it like if we, I had bought it now yeah. it would be so much more expensive mm, okay. if you buy a life insurance by like buying it when they are just born it really is so much cheaper with the same kind of coverage so and this, this is this these are only things that I've learned after being a mom. So this is what gives you that sort of safety net to keep them. And, and yeah. they will also feel safe, honestly. Emotionally and financially. <laughs> very, very important. We've talked about all the ills, all the ills of the social love, media. The love-hate of social, yeah. social media. So now let's talk a little bit about love. <laughs> what I love about having a social media account is that we have our own voice. Yeah. All of us now have yeah. our own voice. And as a public figure, I think that's really very powerful. Because I mean, we started so young, right? Yeah. We always could, our voice will only hurt uh, via an agency yeah. or via a manager. Well, before that, it was and via a picture, right? Yeah, it was always very controlled in a very controlled environment and then it had to be vet and then it had to be like, you know, just always had to go through something and sometimes even when you're accused or you're yeah. being maligned, like you can't even stand up for yourself. You can't, oh my gosh, can I just say I am still very sore about this and now I brought back a lot of skeletons from the closet, <laughs> just oh saying, right, via the saying F on TV, right. When that happened, right, I was so pissed. You couldn't even explain, I couldn't, right? I gave my statements, but they, what, what the company, the statement that they released was different to what I wanted really? to say. Really? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't want to say what they released as my words. Right, whereas now that would not have yeah, flown. Yeah, that would not have happened. Because if let's say they did that, you could come back on social media and say that's not what I meant. Yeah. Or you release your own statement in your own words on social yeah, media, right? Exactly. So it's, it's a totally different time now. It is a completely yeah. different ball game. Even I think in terms of how the industry function. Yeah. Now you don't really need an agency yeah. per se. Like you, anyone can just connect with anyone. So liberating. We're yeah. no longer at their mercy. And I guess starting out as models, right? You mm. you have the like the ice cream fashion look, right? Mm. I have the sweet girl next door look, right? So people just think you're the ice cream. I'm the sweet girl next door. And it, both of these are so far from the truth. All the glamorous. You have the very. Yeah, glamorous I really thing. just cannot imagine. Like, right, because I always get sweet the. Girl. Oh, yeah, I got all smile. the because of my smile. So I get all the like. Sanitary pet commercial telcos, uh, telcos yeah, all the imagine. like very family friendly brands because of the smile, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah, then, yeah. so people think that you are a sweet young thing, and then they meet you, and they're like, oh, this force of nature, yeah. or they think you're this ice cream glamorous, and then they meet you, they're like, oh my gosh, this girl so goofy and yeah. like nonsense. So now, now you kind of have things in control, like yeah. you can be whoever you want to portray. Again, let me specify that this is something that we portray on social yes, media, even it's... though it's on social media, it is who we choose to show you. Yes. It does not mean that we are that person. And it's not the full story. Yeah, yeah it's not it's... the full story. It's never the full story. Yeah. I guess I always try to remind people of that. And then people are like, why don't you post like more, even more of the true story? I'm like, because true story sometimes is very boring. It doesn't thing. sell. I mean, honestly, you want to see me work on my laptop, man, or like planning like what to like. But you'll be surprised. Maybe. Now, now I'm very in uh, to have a real yeah. way. Just put it there. Next time I work on my I laptop. I really don't understand that. Eh. I'm very also. disconnected. <laughs> you know, like they have now like Twitch, right? They have the IRL um, Twitch. Uh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm like, huh? So you just put the camera there and you go about and your day? instant noodles. Like it started with the ASMR thing, right? Yeah, no, but ASMR at least is a genre on its own. This one is like... Okay, I like ASMR lah, so like... This one is really just put the thing there, like... Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, I also don't get it, but... I, I think I, I'm, I'm too busy for this kind of thing, you know? Like we are too busy to watch yeah, someone else yeah. like live their life. Yeah. Like busy living hours, man. It's true, it's true. But I think social media can be used for good and... Uh, PSA, we want to encourage you to use it for good. Before you say something negative, remember the person has a, a wife, a mother, brother, sister who will be sad if you write something mean yeah. about them. Right, but if you have something good to say, I think you should be, it's worth spreading as well. Like, I like when people spread good things. Yeah, me too. We yeah. are very similar like that. Even yeah. though, you know, we don't look like it. Yeah. <laughs> and we're actually not similar in terms of character, but yeah, I think we are very similar in this way. Yeah. Like to follow positive content. Unfollow people that make you un un unhappy. If yes. You think, if you think it's very rude, you can mute them. Yeah, for me, right, I always believe that social media is an exchange of energy. It really is. Wow, hey, Sheila always can count on you to come out with this kind of thing. It really that. is, don't you feel? An exchange of energy, like, you need to be so cheap or not? <laughs> what does that mean? Okay, so if you are scrolling through all the accounts that you follow and they are draining for you, okay. it basically means that they are zapping away your energy. Oh, true, true, true. So if there's a lot of these people who kind of, like, you feel like, why? Wow, I see their post, right? I feel damn tired. Like she's always spreading negative energy. Yep, yep. It probably is because it's very negative. Ah, then unfollow okay, it. Okay. But if you follow very wholesome accounts like those... Okay, well, okay. Now this one is fun. What are the whole, your favourite wholesome accounts that give you um, a lift? Like there's this one called Upworthy. 
Oh, okay, okay. It has yeah, really yeah, yeah. nice posts. It's about, it's about everything. It's like about animals, about old people, about children. Yeah, I like that one yeah. as well. Yeah. So I really love that. There's a lot of like motherhood one. I mean, yeah. obviously because now I'm in this stage, right? There are like food ones, definitely. I follow this one called Library Mindset. I think that has quotes. Library like, Mindset? Yeah. Ah, quotes. And also this one, a bit embarrassing, but I should just share. I've been following a lot of bird accounts. Really? I like to look at birds. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. There's this account called Birds Perfection. <laughs> now people gonna think I'm some weird bird lady. It brings me joy to see yeah, beautiful. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not even getting the full extent of this pun, I think. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> I'm not pretend, like just gloss over that. Like, I don't know what she just said. But I like, it gives me oh joy to God, see. Oh my god, this is very shocking. Beautiful eh. birds. No, wow. I guess it's similar to some people who like kitten videos. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, Jack. Yeah, but that's because we have uh, um, Sha. Yes. And me. And Sheila. Yes, yeah, I really have a pet. But you don't even have. I I've commit. never ever heard you mention anything about birds. I like birds. to look at beautiful birds and beautiful plants. Wow. So I follow this sort of accounts. That's interesting. But basically, there's something for everyone, right? We're just saying that. <laughs> follow follow something that lifts yes. you up. <laughs> So weird. I feel like I know you a little bit better today. That's perfection. <laughs> really good. Okay guys, let us know below. Any thoughts? Please don't leave us hate comments. <laughs> <laughs> Please be kind and watch out for our next episode where we discuss other matters that are that actually matter. Other topics that actually matter. What do you say? People who People who matter don't mind. And people who mind, mind don't, don't matter. matter. So the rest of the haters, bye. See you guys. Hey, look at this. It's the most beautiful bird you've ever seen. Hey, do you know about... Very cool one! Do you know about who bird? <laughs> Is that confirm not fit for camera? No, I mean, I know something or two, if you must know, but I don't know how what... I don't know what context in which you're asking this.